As you can tell, we're having trouble with the computer. Um, we do have sort of the screen up, but um, we'll begin the service without the recorded prelude. And if we need to sing the hymns, we'll do them a cappella. And remember, you are to mask when you sing. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you are able, please rise. Hear God's love. We hear God's love. God's love. Open our ears to hear and our hearts to be transformed by our words of words and actions of love to and for the world. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into eternal life. Amen. Our gathering hymn is Let All Things Now Living, number 881. Let all things now living a song of thanksgiving to God the Creator, triumphantly raised, who fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us, who still guides us on to the end of our The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food we may live as his body in the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word.
The first reading is from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 4 through 8. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food, 40 days and 40 nights, to Oreb, the Mount of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all might, malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you are able, please rise for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats the bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The crowds that followed Jesus across the sea had questions for him, especially today. For the third week in a row, we are following the story of these crowds. He had provided them with bread in the wilderness, just as God had provided manna in the wilderness. When they wanted more, he offered himself as the bread of life. But did they see it? No way. And they didn't understand, obviously. Jesus pressed them, and they pushed back. There is a difference, Jesus seems to say, between bread that leaves one hungry for more and bread that satisfies. There is a difference between bread that comes to the body and the bread that flows through the body. There is a difference between bread that sustains us only until death and bread that leads to eternal life in God's presence. The crowds didn't hear it. They didn't understand it. Jesus' statements made no sense to them at all. I am the bread from heaven, they're thinking. Now, they knew his father and mother. They knew where Jesus came from. And his statements simply made no sense to them. He couldn't be the bread from heaven. He was from a small town in their own land. One of the last two towns where I served in Kansas is so tiny that nearly everybody in the town, even though the town was formed in the mid-1800s, 175 years ago or so, almost everybody in town is related to each other. That's the kind of town Jesus came from. But the crowds had limited sight and understanding. They saw only what they expected to see. They saw bread multiplied in the wilderness, but they failed to recognize that the leftovers, all those baskets full of bread that they had been collecting, were there for them to share with others, those who couldn't be there at the time. They saw Jesus heal the sick, but they failed to recognize the source of his healing power. They failed to see how God would work in and through Jesus for the sake of the world. So it is no surprise that they failed to see how God might also work in them and through them. They saw themselves as receptacles, the receivers, not people who would now pay forward the fruits of God's amazing gifts. You probably remember the movie, Pay It Forward. I know it's been a while, but it tells the story of a young boy who challenged by his teacher to make the world a better place, decides to begin a pay it forward movement to share blessings in the whole world. 
The actual action of Pay It Forward didn't begin with this movie, but it did empower a lot of people to think about the impact such actions would have. Now, you all know I'm a little crazy. <laughs> My first major in college, of all things, was Latin. <laughs> I plan to become a Latin teacher. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, two Latin phrases that I've always loved, and they're phrases that are used here in our English language even. One is quid pro quo, which means literally something for something. In other words, if you receive something, you should give something. And another one is pro bono, which means for good. So it means for the good of the world. That's what we are called to do. I wonder, are not our questions that we have for Jesus often the same, though, as the people who were following Jesus in today's gospel? Do we not also look to Jesus to give us gifts that have their end point with us rather than seeing that our gifts are meant to flow through us and out to help others? It's not the scarcity of bread and the rampant hung hunger physical, emotional, spiritual hunger, a result of our keeping the gifts of God to ourselves rather than sharing them with the world. We have a lack of faith to see that God's grace and gifts will continue to come to us even when we give up maybe what we have and share it with those who are more in need. Jesus, on the other hand, does obviously not lack such faith. He gives even to the point of death because he trusts that God's grace and love are more powerful even than death itself. And God raises Jesus up. Suddenly, the promises of God are more clearly visible, both to Jesus' followers in his day and to us today. The strongest negation of life, death itself, is no match for the life affirming power and love of God. When Jesus promises that he will raise us up on the last day, he is promising that God will more than fill us. And what he'll fill us with is the bread of life, even when we are at our emptiest. How liberating is this word? No longer do we have to search for things that, to fill our lives. God has given us more than enough. His love will never, ever, ever run out. We are now freed by God to give ourselves willingly and lovingly in the world without hesitation and without reservation. For though we might think of ourselves as spent and exhausted, God never runs out. When God's love flows through us rather than simply to us, we suddenly 
find ourselves able to give more than we ever thought we could. Not that we are the source, obviously. God has given this to us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And blessed are we, blessed to be a blessing to the world. Amen. Okay, our hymn of the day, we'll do verse 1 of Soul, Adorn Yourself with Gladness, number 488. Let me grab my hymnal and I'll start it. into Christ, living together in trust and hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us become before the triune God in prayer. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water, grant comfort and healing to those affected by all disasters, especially the fires in our country and the storms around the world so they may know, come to know new life through you. Lord, in your mercy, For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice. 
for corrections officers and prison chaplains that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. Lord, in your mercy, for all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick, especially for those we name before you now in our hearts or spoken out loud. Lord, in your mercy, for your people worshiping as Emmanuel Lutheran gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who prepare the vessels for our communion celebration, for those who gather around your table at home or in the hospital, Lord, in your mercy, for those who have been raised to eternal life, especially Mary Lynn Helsher, sister-in-law of Mary and Yalmer, or Yaro Shimler, is it Shimler? Shmiler, thank you. And Mary Barnett, sister of Harold Brake. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share the sign of peace with each other through bowing. We give God our thanks and praise through our tithes and offerings of thanksgiving for the mission of the church, including the care of those in need. For those worshiping inside the sanctuary, we will receive your offerings at the plates located in the back of the sanctuary. For those who are worshiping online, we, you are invited to mail your checks to Emmanuel, sign up for automatic withdrawal, or give online through our website. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. 
When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal, as grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come, eat Christ's love. We celebrate Holy Communion today, Christ's banquet, a gift of Christ's presence, a gift of forgiveness, a gift of life for you. You receive the prepackaged sealed grape juice with a sealed wafer as you enter the sanctuary. When I say the body of Christ given for you, you may open the wafer and eat. And when I say the blood of Christ shed for you, you may open the grape juice and drink. You may bless the non-communion members of your family with the words, you are a child of God. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace as you are able 